Welcome everyone. I'm so excited to have you guys back for our community session. As you know, um, we're gonna be here every Friday. I just wanna show you that uh, where all these videos are gonna be um, recorded so you can go back and watch them later. So they'll be under our resources, under our video tab right here. I mean, we all miss this face. Andrew just uh, transitioned to a different position. He actually doesn't sit too far from me now. I'm sure he enjoys that. Um, but he's uh, in another meeting today, so he couldn't join us. But I see some Floral Fridays are still kicking it. Good stuff. Um, another thing is our group. So everything will be posted in our group as well. Um, one other thing, we are launching our events tab. So up here in the top, uh, instead of Connect 2021, you're gonna see events. We're gonna have, I mean, this gorgeous man's face, uh, and then you'll see everything else that is happening throughout uh, the rest of the year for our community sessions. You can do a little research if you'd like on who our guests are gonna be. So I'm excited to bring you that. One last thing I wanna bring to your attention is uh, we just launched a new course yesterday. So it's right down here, why small and medium businesses need SEO. Uh, I highly re recommend checking it out. Our, some of you may be familiar with Boostability. They're one of our vendors. We worked really closely with them to put this together. And uh, our new instructional designer, Loretta Peters, this is her first course that she launched. So super proud of her and excited that she got to actually join one of our uh, instructors. So super excited to have you guys. Um, okay. How do I stop sharing now? Is that right? That worked, right? You guys no longer see my screen? Oh, good. I always somehow mess that up. Okay, now to the main event, Larry Long Jr. He is the founder and CEO of Larry Long Jr. LLC. Uh, he focuses a lot on sales motivations, training, coaching, and one of my personal favorites, he's the host of Midweek Midday Motivational Minute. Uh, he also co-founded, uh, was the co-founder and lead instructor of the Sales Allies, an online sales training course in support of community design to uplift the sales community. So without further ado, Mr. Larry Long Jr., welcome to the community session. What's going on, y'all? Can everyone hear me? Is this thing on? You're here. You hear you loud and clear. It's great. Ha happy Friday. I'm happy to be here. Everyone doing all right? Okay. I need to see some smiling faces. I don't. I don't know about y'all, but I like to. I like to have a warm welcome with some smiling faces in the places. Y'all know I can see your faces. Some of y'all, I'm thinking, why so serious? I mean, why is so goodness serious? great. Don't, yeah, don't be, don't be angry. Don't be hangry. I got two mics. There's enough to go around for everybody. So I, I want to say thank you to Colleen and the team for inviting me to come in. Vendasta, we got the community session. It's an honor and a privilege. So real quick, my background. And once again, this is for you. I'm, this isn't about me, but just to lay the foundation, Larry Long Jr. I'm the founder of LLJR. It's a motivational speaking, coaching, training business. Uh, but my background, real quick, played baseball at University of Maryland, go Terps. And yes, that is a pink bat. I don't leave home without it. Uh, but after playing baseball in Maryland, I went to spring training with the Dodgers and the Red Sox. And they said, hey, Larry, thank you for coming out. God bless you. And good night. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. They chucked up the deuces on me and they said, you don't have to go home, but you got to get the heck up out of here spring training. So um Went to Accenture, did IT consulting, opened up an indoor baseball and softball academy, teaching youngsters the fundamentals of the game, but more importantly, the fundamentals of life. After we closed that down, I've had a series of tech jobs, tech sales, and now I get to support tech sales leaders and tech sales reps. So uh, we're here for you. And I'm here to share, and, and I know it says five, five tips for breaking through what's holding you back, but I got a bonus. I actually got six, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, but I, I want this to be interactive. The, the last thing that I want, and I got to warn you, it runs in my family. There's a condition called logorrhea. Uh, does anyone know? Is there a doctor in the house or nurse? Anyone know what logorrhea is? Show of hands. Nobody? Bueller? Nobody? Okay, logorrhea, it's diarrhea of the mouth. Blah! It runs in my family. So I'm asking y'all to help me out. I want to make this interactive as we go. So uh, let's get down to business. Let's get started. And we're going to take this back to basics. 
Uh, my daughter is in is in second grade. She's seven years old, and they're talking about the ABCs, the one, two, threes. As entrepreneurs, as professionals, I believe that we've got to get back to the basics. We got to get back to the ABCs, and, and really the core focus of what I'm going to talk about today is intentionality and choice. Think about that. Are you intentional with everything that you do? And are you making the right choices to get you where you wanna get to both professionally and even more importantly, personally? So we'll start with number one and number two. You might be looking, you're like, Larry, the Olympics have gone and passed. What you talking about, Willis? Who let the dogs out, Colleen? I, I didn't forget, yeah. <laughs> the dog named Willis, come on now. But number one, and we're gonna go through the ABCs, is action. You've got to take action. And I'm gonna throw on accountability. Now, let me go ahead and, and make my screen big. By a show of hands, I wanna know, how many of y'all are working with a coach? Show of hands, who's working with a coach out there? Okay, Jonathan, Isaac, hold your hands up. I need to see it. Rick James, I see you, Robert. Where's the hair? Okay, okay, Brett, I appreciate it. Uh, I would like to share with y'all my experience. I started working with a performance coach. Uh, this was back, I went full-time in March, started working with her in June. It's been an absolute game-changing experience. And why is that? Number one, she, she holds me accountable. Uh, essentially, I have that accountability as a solopreneur, as an entrepreneur, essentially, I call the shots. But now I've got that support. I've got that accountability partner that's really making sure I stay on task. And then the next one is action. Essentially, you can have the brightest ideas, the best ideas in the world. But if you don't take that first step and then you don't take that next step and put it into action, guess what? You're going to have a tough time accomplishing whatever those goals are. So I just want to strongly encourage to invest in yourself. You think about it, that, that's the best investment you can make. And just from my personal experience growing up, playing team sports, basketball, baseball, never played football. My parents didn't let me. Thank goodness. It's uh, probably would have broke in half, but having a coach to guide you, to support you, to make sure that you're heading in the right direction is super important. So that's A, that's number one. Number two, and you can see it here. Don't stop believing. Belief. That's number two, belief in yourself. Believe you me, I know that it's tough out there especially over the last, what, 18, 19 months, we've been going through some chaos. We've been going through some turbulence. I don't care if you, you're a newborn. I don't care if you're a centenarian. And you're like, whoa, he's throwing out some big words. I learned that from my, my seven-year-old daughter. My Aunt Willie turned 95. And my daughter, I don't, she's kind of crazy. She must get it from her mama. She said, Aunt Willie, I hope you live to be a centenarian. I said, oh, can you spell it? <laughs> she said, I want you to live to 100. But essentially, you've got to have that internal belief in self that you can accomplish what you want. So I'm, I'm going to share a story with you. I started off my freshman year at Maryland, and people were like, what position did you play? At that point, I played left out. I don't know if there's any baseball fans here, but left out is not a good place. Hey, coach, can I get in? Nah, Larry, you're left out. Go to the end of the bench because whatever you have, it might be contagious, kind of like these droplets, these COVID droplets. <laughs> but I started off my career one for my first 24. I don't know if there's any math majors out there, but 0.048 is not going to get you in the starting lineup and it will get you down in the dumps. I'll never forget, we played against a school in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm in Durham, North Carolina, but at the time I was playing at Maryland. I think I went 0 for 7 over the weekend, getting in as a substitute at the end of the game, strike out, strike out, which uh, as a hitter, that's not a good thing. And uh, I remember we were in the parking lot of a Burger King. We, we used to eat healthy on the road. My dad said, hey, little Larry, how are you feeling? I said, I feel terrible, dad. I stink. I don't belong at Division I baseball, and I definitely don't belong in the ACC, the Atlantic Coast Conference at the time. My dad hopped through that phone. He snatched me up, and he pretty much said, boy, you can't have my name with a stank attitude like that. He pretty much said, that's not how we roll. You better get back to the drawing board. 
And for baseball, the drawing board is hitting off the tee. I don't know if there's any NBA fans in here, but kind of like Allen Iverson said, yes, we're talking about practice. So I ask you just to look in the mirror. How often are you practicing your craft? How often do you work on it outside of work hours? Are you a student of whatever your game is? Are you intentional with working and stepping your game up? Now, my dad said, hey, you got to get on the tee. But even more importantly, little Larry, you got to get your mind right. Essentially, if you don't believe, and I think Henry Ford said it, someone, someone can Google it, but I think his quote, and I'm going to give the remix, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, guess what? You're right. So my question to you is, do you still believe? I think journey, I'm not, I'm not a huge journey fan, but I think they said it, don't stop believing. Is that right, Colleen? Did I get that right? Don't stop believing, don't get me singing. I'll have y'all cry. I don't wanna make anyone cry, I'm toned. <laughs> but my question to you as well, in addition to that belief is, who's on your team? Who's your A team? When you look to your left and your right, Who's on your squad? Who's supporting you? Who are your cheerleaders? Hercules, Hercules. It's so important. And I think it was, uh, oh goodness. Mm, it's on the tip of my tongue. But there's a quote that says, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you're spending time with negative Nancys, negative Nellies, I apologize if anyone's name is Nancy or Nelly. Guess what? You're probably gonna be negative. But if you surround yourself with positive influences, folks that are actually doing the daggone thing, chances are you're going to step your game up as well. And that's where we want to get to. So essentially, that's the action. That's the uh, belief. And now we're going to get into number three. Number three is C. And there's a lot of C words. There's confidence. There's courage. There, there's uh, communication. I mean, I can go on and on. But the one I want to focus on is care. And when I think about care, I think of the give a damn factor. Pardon my French, parlez-vous français, but do you give a damn? And number one, do you give a damn about yourself? Self-care. Are you taking care of your mind, your body, and your soul so that you can then, and I think they say it's tough to pour into someone else's cup, from an empty cup. If your cup is empty, oh, good luck pouring into someone else's cup. So you're looking at me and I can see your faces. You're like, yeah, I know that. Thank you, Captain Obvious. I already know that, Larry. Well, that's great. My question is, no one ain't doing. I talked to my doctor and he said, Larry, you got to cut out the fried foods. You, uh, you're going to die a little bit earlier if you eat fried foods. So I know I'm not supposed to eat fried foods, but you ask me what time it is, it's bow time. I don't know if anyone's ever had Bojangles, but here in North Carolina, chicken and biscuits, oh, finger licking good. I think that's KFC, but both. <laughs> so even though you know it, what are you doing around that care? Now, now let's break it down. I, I need y'all to help me out here. Can everyone pull out a sheet of paper? Uh, if, if you use your tablet or you use your phone, yeah, I need you to write down eight things. I call these my seven Fs, and you'll laugh at number seven and the one C. I'll go a little bit slowly because I know I talk fast. I can see you laughing at me, BK. Stop that. <laughs> All right. Number one, faith. F-A-I-T-H, faith. Number two, family. You know, some of y'all are writing in calligraphy. Don't say football. Olympics. Oh, no, not football. <laughs> so we got faith. We got family. Friends. The next one is my favorite fun. <laughs> I like to have fun. I don't know about y'all, but I'm having fun, especially on a Friday. Shoot. Can't tell me nothing. <laughs> Fitness. Yeah, we can get a little workout in. Uh oh, fitting to get loose over here. Oh, watch out now. <laughs> I see you, Rashida. It ain't that funny. <laughs> Number six, we got finances. Uh oh, must be the money. <laughs> I think that's number six. I, I, I lost count. Kind of like my batting average. Oh, left out. <laughs> number seven, philanthropy. And for those that are wondering, no, it's not an F. I spell phonetically, I think they call it N, phrenetically. <laughs> 
but philanthropy. And then number eight, ooh, career. The entrepreneurs, that's your business. For the professionals, that's your career. Now here goes the exercise. I want you to do a self audit. Let's take a look in the mirror. I want you to go ahead and give yourself a rating. Let's be honest, uh, scale of one to 10. Where are you at on those? And I'm just gonna share this with you because I know a lot of people are gonna be like seven. Mm, that's playing it safe. Seven is that number where it's not low enough where you feel like you're a bum and it's not high enough to feel like you're cocky. So I just ask you no sevens. Let's go six, skip over seven and eight, but let's do a, a honest, where are you at? And be honest. I talked to a group of CEOs in Chicago. One of the gentlemen said, hey, Larry, in the fun category, I'm a two. Business is rough, so I'm not fun to be around for my employees, and I carry that home. So I'll shut my mouth. I'll give you all the mic. Go ahead and give yourself a rating. When you're done, go ahead and just throw two, chuck up the deuces in the air to let me know when you're done. Larry, I have my team around me asking me what each number is again. Do you want to run through them again real quick or I can? No, we oh, got. Oh, just, just scale, scale of one to 10. Do they want to know the categories? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Faith, faith. Faith. Family. Friends. Fun. Fitness. Finances. Philanthropy. And career. Awesome. Oh, thanks, Nicole. Thank you, JD. I see you, Jonathan. Thank you. People just drop in the chat. Thank you, BK. All right, Loretta, checking up the deuces. I feel you. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it, Mr. Deming. JB, I see you, Jeremy. BK, I already got you. Come on, man. You trying to double dip? Chocolate chip? Uh-oh. You're a little bit too happy. Come on now. <laughs> hey, when it's this good, when it's this good, I go back for seconds. Come on. <laughs> wow. I love it. I love it. Well, for those that are still working on it, it's okay. And really, this is just for you. This self-audit will really provide you with an honest report card, a barometer of where you're at. But wait, it gets better. I want you to take those eight buckets and now it's decision time. I want you to go ahead and stack rank your top five. What are the most, the top five most important for you? This is a hard one, Larry. I know. <laughs> Yeah, we're putting in that work today. Happy Friday. Gosh. <laughs> At least you're not asking me to do math, so we're good. Wow, I can I can feel I can feel the the, the brain waves, I love it. Y'all are putting in that work. This is the last one, I promise. This is the last one. I want you to take your top three, and this is where the rubber meets the road. Your top three, and I want you to think about what can you do starting tomorrow for your top three, for each one, 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 one action item you can take in your top three to take whatever your number is. If your number is a six, how can we get it to an eight? If your number is a two, how can we get it to a three? What action can you take for those top three? I'm going to give you about, let's go 90 seconds. This is really the tough work. What can you do? Not think about, not write about, but do to up-level yourself in your top three. Larry, we have Loretta behind me asking, what if she graded herself on a 10? 
Whoa, well, Loretta, I need the notes because I'm not a 10 in any of these categories, even fun. I'm a nine. Oh, man, I'm definitely a 10 in fun. Just saying. Oh, wow. Definitely okay. a 10 in fun. <laughs> I, need, I need to take notes then. Come on, wow. please. Wow. Wow. Fun fact, uh, Loretta spins fire. She rides like a one wheel. She is a glass blower. Like this girl is the definition of fun. Whoa, she's the most interesting woman in the world. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Loretta got swagger. She's talking mad smack. I can see you talking over there, Loretta. You're like, yeah, he ain't got nothing on me. Let me brush my shoulders off. I got a question for you, Larry. What, what you got? I, I feel like oftentimes people are very critical of themselves because they don't want to be that person that says they're a 10. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what's your advice for making sure that you aren't being too critical, but also like making sure you're self-aware and being reasonable in your ratings? Yeah, you, you've got to be honest. You've got yeah. to be honest. I've, I've been through this same exercise and I'm tough on myself. But I'm also realizing that there are some things that I do well. When it comes to finances, I don't do that very well. When it comes to fitness, I told you it's bow time. That's a big challenge. When it comes to my faith and my family, I'm very intentional, but there's still room for improvement. So I'm above the seven on those, but I'm below the seven on some. And I'm, I'm really doing the work. And this is thanks to my coach of being intentional with my top priorities. Those things that fall below the line, they're important, but they're not important and urgent. So yes, I'm still going to do it, but I'm not going to do it with the same intention right now. I'm trying to focus on those top three to put in that work to make progress. How do I up-level my skills personally? Yep. Uh, I talked to a gentleman, I have a coaching client and what he shared with me is family. He's an eight, feels pretty good. But I said, what well, would we'll take you to a nine? And just like a lot of folks who can probably relate, it was, hey, when I'm spending time with my kids, it's making sure I'm looking up and not looking down. Can I get a witness? Yes, yeah. I can relate. My son just turned 12. I got his birthday party tomorrow. They're going to be out there shooting airsoft guns. He was like, daddy, will you come out there? I'm like, nah, I'm too old. I'm going to pull a muscle. But guess what? That's an experience that he'll never forget having his old man out there fumbling, stumbling, bumbling, getting popped off with airsoft bullets. So he doesn't know this, but I'm going to be out there with him and his other little young whippersnappers, and we're going to have a good old time. And I'm taking him out golfing on Sunday. I don't, I don't know if y'all did the scouting report. I don't know if Colleen or Brett told y'all, but uh, Tiger Woods is my cousin. So I'm taking my son golfing on Sunday. Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. Yeah, y'all, 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 some of y'all are looking skeptical. You're like, he ain't Tiger. I don't know. Is, is there, was there, a, pun is like there, a, is there a punchline to follow that one? Or is that, is that real deal? That's real deal. I mean, shoot, they, I'm his long lost cousin. They call me Larry hit it in the woods. But <laughs> 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 Jeez Louise. Walked right into that one. <laughs> My wife hates it. She's like, don't go telling those people that stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> she hears that but i'm in your office and just knows you're up to something eh? <laughs> oh i love it i love it oh, so, so i want to say thank you for y'all participating in that i encourage you because because the worst thing that can happen is we leave here you're like ah this guy was yelling at us he was screaming he had a gold mic a pink bat he was kind of crazy and, and you don't do anything with it so like i said that intentionality and that action, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to choose to make a difference? Or I think it's the definition of insanity. You keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. So I encourage you and I support you. And I look at the community around here that supports you in order for you to up level in your top three. Let's make it happen. So that's C. Uh, now we're getting into D. And like I told y'all, I've got a seven-year-old daughter. Oh, she's a dreamer. And I love it. The things that she dreams about are absolutely amazing. The things that, that she wants to be, my 12-year-old son, the things that he wants to be. I don't know about y'all. I'm getting older and wiser. I don't know if y'all can see the grays. My wife said, you're getting older. You ain't getting no wiser. Don't, don't go tell those nice people you're getting wiser. But I, I know at some point, sometimes we stop dreaming. 
And I had to go through the exercise with my coach on what I really dreamed about. I own a speaking business, so I get to impact lives, which is awesome. But what I really want to do is I want to carry the baton. My father was a track guy. He was a long jumper, triple jumper at University of Maryland. My sister, 10 years younger, she was a long jumper, triple jumper at University of Maryland. Uh, I'm the black sheep of the family, literally and figuratively playing baseball. But essentially, he passed almost six years ago. And he always wanted to open a, an academic and athletic center for the youth of Baltimore City, Baltimore, Maryland. That's where he grew up. He never got to fulfill that dream. But I'm putting myself in a position where I can. And I'm going to get vulnerable with y'all. There were tears in my coaching session as I unpacked and as I verbalized what I dreamed about. I had put it under lock and key in the back of my head. I didn't even think it was possible. And uh, when you say impossible, I'm, I'm, I love words. Impossible just means I am possible. So now I'm on a four-year plan to be breaking ground in 2025 on the shorty long. My, my dad, his nickname was shorty. <laughs> I'm five foot nine and three quarters. I round up to six feet. Hey, if Russell Wilson can do it, I can do it. Russell Wilson's a little... <laughs> But it says, I'm going to be opening the Shorty Long Academic and Athletic Community Center, either in Baltimore, in Durham, where I live, Charlotte, uh, somewhere where the youth uh, needed and really had that impact on the youth. And I'm using my platform to be able to, 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 to have that happen. So I encourage you, what are your dreams? What were your dreams 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago? And where are they now? And then what are you doing to accomplish those dreams? Please don't stop dreaming. Don't stop believing. All right, we're, we're down to the home stretch. And uh, I'm not good at letters A, B, C, D, E. This is number five. It's electric. I feel like I'm at a family reunion. We're doing the electric slide. Watch out now. Now, I don't wish my energy my electricity on anyone. It's a blessing and a curse. Come on, Frank. I know you know what it's like to be in the back. box. Oh, goodness. My coach said, Larry, you got to get your eyes checked. You're good on the fastballs, but the curveball, are you able to see? I'm like, yeah, coach, I can see, but I'm just so, ooh, I'm just so electric. I want to go get it. He's like, no, that ain't going to work, big dog. <laughs> but you've got to bring some sort of energy. You've got to bring some sort of electricity. Uh, show of hands, uh, how many entrepreneurs do we have in the house? Any entrepreneurs in the house? All right, I like that. All right, put your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you, do we have any sales professionals? Any Anyone in sales? Any sales professionals? Thank you, Kathy, C-Dub. Thank you, the other Kathy. Thank you, DP, Daryl. Okay. Uh, I don't know if y'all heard me. Are there any sales professionals in the house? Uh, everyone's hands should go up. We're all. Y'all better sales. raise your hands. You ain't doing that. You ain't had a business. We're we're all in sales, or we better be, and it's all about your definition of sales. I'm a big believer that when I think about sales, I think it's a transfer of energy. It's a transfer of some sort of juice, and the juice is loose with me. I, some of y'all look a little bit subdued. Are you awake? Do I need to revive you? <laughs> Shoot, you better be passionate. And have that electricity for whatever it is you're selling, whether it's yourself, whether it's a product, a service, a thought, or an idea. You better be out there playing matchmaker with other people's needs, their wants, their desires, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, playing million dollar matchmaker. Like, uh, what's her name? Patty Stanger. I think she's the million dollar matchmaker. That's what we should be doing. It takes that energy and that electricity. So as we wrap, as we get down to business, this is the last one. And this is the most important one. You've got to have fun. You've got to have fun. You only live once. I think that's what the millennials call it, YOLO. I had to look that up in the dictionary. I was like, YOLO, what you call me? They were like, no, YOLO, you only live once. I said, oh, goodness, I'm, I'm not a millennial. I'm not a hip hopper like I used to be. I said, I feel like I'm on a yo-yo going up and down on a Tuesday. Uh, I know through the pandemic and just life, it'll throw you curveballs, twists, turns, ups, downs, all around. If you're not having fun and enjoying what you're doing, guess what? I got a secret for you. I got a secret. 
move on. I was having the conversation just this morning with my wife. Don't tell her employer, but she's not passionate about what she does. I said, hey, baby, I got your back. Just like you had my back stepping into speaking. I'll be honest with y'all. December of 2019, my wife called me to task. I was speaking part-time, wasn't charging anyone. And she said, hey, baby, you tell everyone else to pursue their dream. Look in the mirror. I said, uh-oh, Houston, we got a problem. She caught me. She said, hey, you're faking the funk. <laughs> what, what's going on? And I had to get vulnerable and tell her that I was scared. I was scared. I had a failed baseball academy. That was before kids, before I was married, and I didn't want to put them through it. She said, hey, you must not know about me. I said, oh, it's Beyonce up in here. She said, you got a real one. I got your back. She said, let's go to work. So I called a coach, a speaker coach, and we got down to business. March 17th, it was St. Patrick's Day. I'm not Irish. I'm not even Black Irish, but March 17th of last year, it was right after the pandemic hit. I don't know if y'all remember, but Friday the 13th was when everything shut down in my world. The 17th, I had a speaking engagement. They said, hey, we still want you, but keep your droplets to yourself. Don't come in our office. We're going to do it via Zoom, with Brady Bunch style. Fitting to get loose. They said, hey, send us your invoice. I said, uh-oh, Larry Long Jr. ain't got no invoice. I went to Google. I found an invoice. They said, we need your W-9. I said, WTF? What you talking about, Willis? I went to the IRS website, found a W-9, and I guess that was me hanging my shingle. I started full-time March 26th of this year. I can tell you that even through the ups and the downs, even through the lumpiness, I'm having fun each and every day because it's intentional and it's my choice. I encourage you, the time is right now. It's not bow time, but the time is right now. So I hope you were able to take something away. I made a couple of notes uh, of things that I wanted to focus on in addition to the A, B, C, D, E, and F. I want you to focus on relationships. I had a sales guru out of Florida who said, Larry, what I learned in my 30 years of selling, the difference between contacts, people you know, and contracts, people you do business with, is the letter R. Anyone want to help me out? What do you think that letter R stands for? I'll mute yourselves, guys. I saw you. Who, who said that? Who, who, who said it? Kathy P? Yeah. Relationships. Yes. That's it. Yes. You, you, got, you got the gold mic. You, you dropped the mic award. I love it. What he also shared is it's not what you know, but it's so someone help me out. It's not what you know. Who, who you know. Who, who you know. I don't know if y'all watch Family Feud with Steve Harvey, but in my Steve Harvey voice survey says, Nah, you're right. The traditional saying is it's not what you know, it's who you know. But we're going to take it a step further. It's not what you know, and it's not even who you know. It's who knows you and who trusts you and who believes in you in those relationships that really makes things happen. So I encourage you to look at what are you doing to build new relationships, to grow existing relationships. And I've got a challenge for you. I can tell with this group that y'all are up for the challenge. And I think it was Steve Crozier that was talking about picking up the phone and reaching out and touching someone. I love it, Steve. Love it. But I'm going to challenge y'all to the hashtag three minute challenge because I work with a lot of people every day and I hear it all the time. Larry, I don't have enough time. You, I'm like, well, show me your calendar. What are you doing or you don't have any time? And if you don't have time, it's all good. All it takes is three minutes. So think about it. Every day, every weekday, I think there's 260 weekdays in a year. That, that's not a leap year. Uh, but I need you to do a three-minute challenge. I need you to pull up your Rolodex. That's not the watch. That's a Rolex. <laughs> and for some of the millennials, it's your contact list in your phone. You're like, Rolodex? What's that? <laughs> but essentially, every day, I need you to pick one person that you haven't spoken with, that you haven't been in contact with recently. And I need you to take three minutes, put your thinking cap on, and your goal is to surprise and delight them. So if I was going to surprise and delight Colleen, I know there's something about the football team, and I think it's, is it watermelons? Did I get that right? Is it watermelons? Yeah, I, thought, I checked the archives. 
I'm just going to find a funny GIF, a funny meme, a funny GIF, I don't know how you pronounce it, of a watermelon, an exploding watermelon. I'm going to say, hey, Colleen, TGIF, I was thinking about you. Watch out for those exploding watermelons. Touchdown. I don't know, something crazy. And all I'm trying to do is surprise and delight. I'm trying to bring a smile to her face. I'm not asking her for anything. I'm just letting her know that, hey, I'm thinking about you. I care. And I took the time to show you that I care. Now, if you're, if you're really getting jiggy with it, you can do the hashtag 15 minute challenge and reach out to five people a day. Now, I'm not a math major, but that's a whole lot of people that you're reaching out to. That's a whole lot of relationships that you're strengthening, that you're not talking about it, but you're being about it. So if you're up for the challenge, hashtag three minute challenge, let's make that thing happen. The next thing I wanted to talk about was focus. I'm focused short-term and long-term focus. So many times, and I work with sales reps, so many times they do busy work. It's kind of like that dog that's chasing his tail. It's kind of like that football player that goes sideline to sideline, but you're not making any forward progress. I encourage you to make sure that you stay focused on, I call them revenue generating activities, because there's a lot of stuff that I can be doing that doesn't really move the needle. It doesn't move the ball forward. It makes me feel good because I'm in a safe space, but you got to break out. You got to make sure that you're doing things that move the needle tremendously. And we all know this, but my question is, are you doing it? And I think I know the answer for most of y'all because when I look in the mirror, I have to remind myself, hey, Larry, it's your choice. You can either do these things over here that make you feel good, or you can do these things over here that drive the needle and drive your business forward. That's the hard rowing. It's hard rowing. If you do what everyone else does, guess what? You're gonna get the same results that everyone else gets. Yeah, it's your choice. Pick your poison. The company that you keep, look to your left and look to your right. Who are you rolling with? Who are your road dogs? Who's your A team? Are you surrounding yourself with those people that you need to be surrounding yourself? And then the last thing that I'm gonna end on is that internal drive, that internal desire. I think Les Brown says, are you hungry? I need people that are hungry. And I know that there's a battle. I go through a battle in my head. I talk more junk to myself. And actually, it's the first chapter of my book. I haven't shared this with many people. I'm writing a book. It's called Jolt. I don't know who came up with that crazy title. Who, who would ever come up with a title like Jolt? Zapping, yeah. zapping you yeah. into intentionality, rediscover and believe in your inner greatness. But my first chapter is the story that you're telling yourself. What story are you telling yourself? I know sometimes I tell myself a story that's it's not true. It's not productive. It, it brings me down. I, I talk more junk, more smack to myself than I would ever talk to anyone else. Than I would ever let anyone talk to me. I encourage you, if you're like me, to really fight that. And I got something for you. This comes, this goes back. I'm going back to the archives. This was uh, circa 1984, six-year-old Larry Long Jr., I think I was living in Grand Island, Nebraska. We had just moved from Danville, Illinois. Kids can be mean, moving to a new place. My mom said, hey, I got something for you, little Larry. We said our prayer at night. She made me stand in the middle of the room with my hands in the air. She didn't make me wave them like I just didn't care, but she did make me say out loud, I am somebody. And when you say that 10 times every night, 365, once again, I'm not good at math, now you got this little seven-year-old walking around with his chest out talking about, I am somebody. You got people looking around like, what in the world? <laughs> this little nappy-headed boy walking around like he is somebody. It's, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. If you don't believe me, give it a try. Tonight, tonight. And I know that you're significant others. You have roommates. The dog, the cat might be looking at you like, I knew they were crazy, but I didn't think they were that crazy. Give it a try. I am somebody 10 times. Come and holler at me in 30 days. I guarantee there's no guarantees in life. I guarantee that one move right there will change your life. So talking about changing life, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to come in and share. I want to give you all time to rock the mic if there's any questions. And I want to put it out there. If there's ever anything that I can do to support you, to serve as a resource, you know where to find me. Holla at your boy, Larry Long Jr. So uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, 
We'll open it up. Oh my gosh, Larry, I have goosebumps. I've been getting private messages from people in the chat. Um, they said, what an incredible way to to kick off our new season of community sessions. So I invite everyone um, either unmute, unmute yourself, ask a question, drop it in the <coughs> chat. Um, I have a few uh, up my sleeve, but I will open it up to the floor first because I think that's only fair. <laughs> oh, okay, questions. Let's hear them. I know people sometimes are are nervous to be the first one to unmute. So I'll start because that's there we go, I Kathy. Am. There so we go. I think one of the biggest benefits for us is to rely on each other. I know every Friday morning I do an accountability with three members of the Vendasta universe: uh, Stephen Arthur, um, Lloyd. What the hell is Lloyd's last name? I have a freaking brain for it. Got Lloyd's last name. <laughs> so am I now. <laughs> oh, Christ. And Kurt Zeverwine. Oh, my God. Lloyd will kill me if he was on. Um, those three really, every Friday, help me be a better agency owner. There is no holds barred. It is a truly honest discussion. And sometimes we bitch slap each other like we did this morning. And other times we pat each other on the back. And even other times, we're really there to hold each other up. So if you're not taking advantage of somebody that you really, really respect in the industry, you're doing yourself a disservice. And Larry, you really did reinforce that because some of the things that we do talk about is focus and dreams. And, and I love it. And thank you. I appreciate you, Kathy. I encourage you. Keep on rocking and rolling. Teamwork really does make the dream work. Some people are like, ah, oh, that's oaky. But when you look at team together, everyone achieves more. I'm a, I'm a member of three masterminds and uh, they each serve a purpose within my personal life, within my business life. And it's, uh, it's amazing when you get the meeting of the minds and different perspectives and you're open to learning. I mean, I think we all have a growth mindset. I encourage you to take that growth mindset and couple it with an action mindset. As JJ Walker said, I know might. Oh my gosh. Larry, I got a question for you. I'm, I cannot be more excited to hear this response, but so you talk a big about a lot about intentionality, right? And you are a very high energy, charismatic individual, right? So, yeah, so through, I, I've, I've put a lot of effort into getting to a point where I don't care about what people think. I care about, I care about people greatly, but to have that intentionality sometimes and hold yourself, hold yourself accountable you got to not care what other people think because you're going to get those funny looks from your dog, cat, your sister, whoever else, right? So I want to hear from your standpoint. If I, don't, if I have Larry Long in my ear, I might fight a T-Rex, but when I'm by myself, how do, I, how do I stay away from those judgments and how do I stay confident? So I talk to myself when I'm at the gym, hyping myself up and I don't care who's watching. I can do this and not care about whatever. What is your advice on that? Yeah, I got something for you, Brett. What other people yeah. think about you, is none of your damn business. It's none of your business, dog. Yeah. So what, who cares? I mean, unless it's positive, unless it's supportive and productive, ain't nobody got time for it. I mean, life is too short. Life is too short. So, I mean, I'm no Simon Sinek, but I love it starts with why. What is your why? What are you solving for? For me, when I wake up in the morning, it's my two beautiful kids, my beautiful wife, it's my mother who's still living, my, my, my sister who's still living. It's the legacy of my father. That's what I'm solving for. And I get it. Some people, I'm not for everybody. Oh, he's too hype. Oh, he's too energetic. It's okay. Good luck. I'm going to pray for you. But for those that I am for, I'm for them. So we're keeping this thing moving. We're keeping it positive. And that's a choice. Like, I live life. My wife's from Argentina. So I got that Latina spice, if you know what I mean. It ain't all sunshine and rainbows, unicorn and rainbow. <laughs> We're in this four-letter word called life, but it is what you make of it. Uh, for anyone that's done P90X, I did P60X. I didn't make it 90 days. My wife got pregnant. Her and the dog were watching me struggle to do these pull-ups in our little apartment. But Tony Horton says, try your best and forget the rest. I love that's all that. I can do. I'm yeah. going to control the controllables. And there's a there's an acronym called E. Uh, I'm trying to cut down. I'm trying to get my beach body ready for next year. So we'll call it T. And I'm in North Carolina, so it's sweet tea. 
You can control how you treat other people. That's the T. You can control your emotions and you can control your actions and your attitude. Outside of that, there's not, I can't control other people. I just got a got an email from the from the class from the uh, principal about my son. That dude is crazy, but he gets it honestly. I can't control him. He's his own man. He's his own little man. I'm I'm like he's a little bit too old to be getting spankings, but I'm like, dude, come on, man, tighten up. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, life is life. It's it's all how you how you how you deal with the situations and. I mean, I, I can go through the letters. My letter for G is grace. And you said it earlier, Brett, give yourself grace. Yeah, be, be, be supportive. Don't be so hard on yourself, but also challenge yourself. I mean, you, your upside and potential is greater than you would ever imagine. And that's something that I know for a fact, having worked with people. Think about it. If you've ever been to a gym, if you're working out by your own, on your lonesome and you're doing the bench press, you might put 135. But if you have someone encouraging you, someone who's spotting you, now you put 205 on there and you never would have thought in your mind that it could be done. And just from that support, it's like, oh, you got it. It's the same thing in life and business. Come on now. And, and would you say that is, was there a sort of epiphany in your life to get to this point? Or was it just consistency, consistency and, you know, progressive? It was my environment. My father grew up in Baltimore City. If you've ever seen the show The Wire, that was his neighborhood. Only okay. one from his family to graduate high school. And he shared with me, he shared with me by his, his actions, but also his words is that, Larry, every day we wake up is a blessing. And uh, there's a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. that says, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing to help others? So I ask myself that every morning, Larry Long Jr., Where's your hair? And then what are you doing to help others? And at the end of the day, if I can answer that, that I actually did something to help someone else out, mission accomplished, mission accomplished. So all that noise, it's none of my business what other people think about me if it's not, if it's not productive and it isn't going to move the ball forward. I'm not going Absolutely. backwards. Awesome. Love that. Larry, this has been so amazing, but I do have one, one more question just to wrap it up here. Um, if there's one gem, one takeaway for the group, something you want to make sure none of us forget, what would it be? Yeah. Lay, lay it on us. Yeah. I mean, you gave some really inspiring stuff, but one thing. It, it, I mean, I talked about a lot and I'm trying to slow down and, oh, that's overwhelming. You got the eight buckets, you got this and this and this. My mind just works that way. I'm working on it. But the most important factor is you got to have fun. You got to have fun. And I just encourage you. Once again, I've asked a lot of questions. Are you having fun? When you wake up in the morning, you feel good. Like, yes, life is good. If you can't say that, it's uh, there's a saying, if it ain't broke, I think some people say don't fix it. Nah, if it ain't broke, break it. Shake it. Flip it upside down. Let's start breaking some stuff. Let's start having some fun. Let's, let's start taking some chances. Shoot, you only live once, YOLO. Now, don't, don't be not smart, don't be stupid, but gotta have fun. If, if, you don't, if you don't take anything away from today, I would say make sure that what you're doing, you're having fun, who you're doing it with, you're having fun. And if not, something's gotta change. Something's definitely gotta change. So incredible. Thank you so much, Larry. Oh, Robert, you unmuted yourself? I, I did. I was hopefully there's enough time to make a quick comment and then you Absolutely. can close up actually. I can't tell you how I put this in the comments, how timely uh, and relevant this talk was for me today. Uh, just yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was sitting on a park bench uh, in my hometown of Montclair, New Jersey uh, with my son who's 15. And he just started his sophomore year in high school. And I'm very blessed in the sense that he is confident and courageous enough to share with me things that he's going through and dealing with. And that's his first year back in school, back in a building. And he was saying as he, he feels a little lost and things of that nature. And um, the short of it is that um, it came down to exactly what you were saying earlier on. I said, you know, everything that we do in life, you know, let's, let's be, I didn't use intentional. I used deliberate, right? Let's be deliberate in our actions. And, and I said, the wonderful thing about life is that when you are authentic, when you are truly genuine, a genuine person, people are attracted to you. Just naturally they'll, they'll gravitate towards you. And not, not within a breath that I say that was a woman walking by, she was walking her dog, she stopped, she turned back around, she didn't know me from Adam, didn't know my son, says, can I ask you a question? She said, my name is Emma, 
Emma Justice. She says, I am, uh, I'm the director of advancement for a nonprofit called Pathways to College. And we help local uh, or, or underprivileged youth, minorities, uh, make the next step after high school into college, right? For funding, things like that. She says, right now we're in the process. She's just doing all this. She's me sitting on the bench. Um, she does all this. She says, right now we're in the process of applying for a grant. And one of the questions on the grant is, how would we go about promoting our platform to these youth, to the, to the teachers in the community? And I'm thinking to myself, this is what I do, right? And I told her, I said, well, I would love to give more thought to your question. Uh, this is what I do for a living. I run a marketing agency. She said, are you kidding me? That's great. And I give her my information. She says, core unlimited. She says, I like it. Knowledge, opportunity, results. She says, the reason why I stopped is because on your shirt, it had opportunity. And that's what we're all about by delivering to you know, these youth. And, and it was just, it was amazing because just someone not knowing me, and I was dressed just like this. I had a hoodie on. I wasn't in my, my usual uniform. And she was attracted to us by the energy that we give off. So great speak, great talk, very timely. I, actually, if you could see me, I actually shed a tear as well. That's because you're so damn cute, Robert. <laughs> oh, God, you're crazy, Kathy. Thank you. You're making them blush. Don't do that, Kathy. <laughs> nice. So bravo, bravo. Way to kick off the new that. season, guys. I appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, we'll put Larry's contact information and everything inside of our community. Uh, it'll be a Monday's email just to, with the link to the video after so you guys can come and and watch it. So, uh, gosh, thank you, Larry. This was amazing. I don't know about everyone else, but I, this riled me up for a great Friday. So I've got a favor real quick before everyone leaves. Can everyone turn on their uh, turn on their cameras? Can we get a group picture? Is that OK? I, yeah, I don't know. I'm here for okay. it. Okay, OK. I was just talking about that, Larry. <laughs> OK, you want to you want to take it, Brett? 100 percent. Wait, do I look uh, good? Hold on. Are hold we on. all good? Make Come sure you on, get my best side. It's the best side. Dang. I don't have my lipstick okay. on. You don't have How your lipstick. Can I do this? On. Can we? Can I do this so everyone's showing here? I gotta yeah, change my. I can do it. Yeah, I'll do it mine too. Okay. Hang on. Gallery. Okay, there we go. And please I mean, send it. To, please send it to me. I want to show y'all love on my LinkedIn, if that's okay. You have to get both pages, though, Brett. There's two pages. Yeah. Two pages of people. Oh, gosh. Okay. We're getting there. Big smiles, everybody. Oh, fuck. I got to clean off the camera a bit. Pardon my French. <laughs> oh, there <laughs> there we go. Guys. Okay. Yep. Boom. Oh. <laughs> Make it a fantastic Friday, y'all. Oh, it's your choice. Gosh. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. See you Thanks. next Friday. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.